So what does a big barrel of charcoal, a bucket of black sand, and a bucket of clay, most of this stuff sourced locally, have to do with blacksmithing? Well, let's take a look and let's find out. We're being visited this week by Jake Radcliffe from Black Sands Forge, and he's got a special project for us. Okay. Uh, aloha. I'm Jake Radcliffe. Um, I am from Hawaii, visiting Black Bear Forge here in Colorado. And we're going to make some wrought iron using the bloomery process. So uh, with that, we've collected our black sand, our iron ore, which is magnetite, which is the best ore you can get. We, uh, this morning, we went and got some clay from a uh, local quarry. We're making bricks right now. This is our bloomery furnace that we're putting together. And uh, for the last couple days, we've been making charcoal. We brought some, um, brought some wood down from a sawmill that I used to work at up in uh, Boulder County. And we've been making uh, charcoal for our fuel source. The bricks we're using, um, originally I had designed it, I wanted to do a, uh, a sand struck brick, but I think the the mold ended up being too too small, and the bricks weren't heavy enough to come out. So um, it can still make a brick, but I need a I need kind of a stylus to force it out. And uh, this this method actually has a name. It's called the slop method. And uh, let's find out why. And there's your brick. And since we're building our furnace with wet bricks, it kind of acts as its own mortar. And there you go. I have, now I've wrapped the courses with uh, cardboard because they're, because the wet bricks, the hydraulic pressure forcing down is gonna make the bricks kind of blow out. So that uh, holds everything in place while I build this tower up and eventually this furnace is probably gonna be about five and a half feet tall. All right, now Jake is making more bricks and bringing the little bloomery furnace up higher and higher. It's going to be about five feet before it's all done. And we're burning more charcoal using the little charcoal retort that I usually use. Today is actually day five of this project. Jake started on Monday scrounging materials in other parts of the state where he knew he could find ore and knew where he could find wood to make charcoal from so he scrounged those to start with and then was here Tuesday went and scrounged some more ore he actually found a good source of iron black sands for the iron content right here on the property and then we found the the clay quarry for the the bricks within about five miles of here so he was able to acquire some clay and all of this material is from Colorado, and all of it, yeah, within 150 miles of here is the crow flies, probably. So it's a, a fairly local and certainly a regional project. And this is going to go on for a few more days. It's probably going to be seven to ten days total before we actually fire the bloomery and make some iron ore. And then they'll be forging the iron ore out to wrought iron, because that's another step.
little bit of help, a handyman secret weapon, duct tape. The bloomery furnace is all stacked, four feet tall. How big a diameter is it? Um, and it's all wrapped in cardboard to keep it from slumping. The top is about nine inches inside diameter, and the bottom is probably probably going to be about 15. Because there's a, uh, a very gradual taper to that, and that's going to allow the, the coal to shake loose and the, uh, the ore to kind of dissipate. A little aid in that uh, so, creation of that bloom. Now that sits for a little while, and then we're going to cure it tomorrow. Cure it tomorrow. And we're going to do that by lighting a fire inside and uh, letting that burn off that inside cardboard and harden up the clay on the inside. And we'll unwrap the outside and it'll just uh, dissipate the steam until all the bricks are dry. Okay. Jake was up early this morning with the sun and he's got a little wood fire going in the bloomery furnace. And this is just to dry it out. This is going to be a slow burn all day, not too hot, and it's just to dry the bricks out so we can get the cardboard all off. And then tomorrow will be the day for the smelt. Can't see a thing. We're going to slowly strip off the outside uh, cardboard as this dries. And uh, hopefully it doesn't fall apart. We hope not. <laughs> Well, Jake's still playing in the mud. The furnace is drying out. It's been, oh, six or eight hours since he started the fire. The outside's starting to dry, but it's also starting to crack, which isn't unexpected. So as we get down to the wire, Jake has gone to the chicken wire here. <laughs> Literally down to the wire. Exactly. And, uh, <laughs> that's just there to help ensure that none of the cracks cause this thing to fail. The cracks are no big deal because this is all sacrificial anyways. And about this time tomorrow, it's going to be a heap on the ground as we pull the bloom out. So, I think Jake said he was going to babysit this fire all night until this is good and dry. And then tomorrow as the sun comes up, we'll start really giving it some heat to, to start the, the firing for the bloom. And we'll see what kind of ore we get out of it. I don't know if I can. Inside. Bloomery furnace has been burning now for probably about 10 hours and we're getting ready to call it good enough. Jake's going to keep a low fire going in it all night long. Ended up about four feet tall and I think, think he gave a measurement yesterday. Hopefully we got that on the, the video. Since I've been filming this over eight days now I'm not exactly sure what I've got in the previous videos and what I don't. So if I repeat myself, that's just the way it goes. Now you can see the yellow plastic blower. This is not a historical recreation. This is simply very basic iron bloom furnace. And the source of air doesn't really matter because we're not trying to recreate a time period. We're just doing an experiment to see what the ore that is found locally here in Colorado produces versus 
the ore at other places. He did one over at Trenton Ties uh, a year or so ago with Georgia ore and Georgia clay to build the furnace. So he's comparing things around the country and he's going to think the next one he's going to do is in Hawaii because he's from Hawaii. So this is dried out. It's ready to go. We could probably burn it right now if we wanted to, but we're not going to burn it all night long other than this low fire just to keep the thing dry and warm and ready to go in the morning. So we're going to come back in the morning. We're going to get back to work on it probably about 6 o'clock in the morning. He's going to do 6 or 8 hours of smelting. He has 70 pounds of ore. We're hoping to get maybe 30, 40, 50 pounds of finished bloom and then that will refine down to a lesser amount of actual wrought iron. I know earlier I said we were producing ore. We're putting ore in the top and out of the bottom when we're done we will take an iron bloom. That has to be hammered and refined and wrought to make wrought iron. That's why it's called wrought iron. So that's the process. That brings you up to date the end of day eight and we will be off and running again tomorrow and we will make that in a separate video just to document the actual smelt process and hopefully get into some of the refinement. If not, that'll be a third video. So I hope this is interesting. I hope you come back and join us when we get back to this and actually try to make some iron. It may work. It may not. We have no idea at this point. But if you liked it, give it a thumbs up. Love it if you hit the subscribe button. In the meantime, get out to your shop, make something, and maybe smelt some iron. Although this isn't an instructional how to smelt iron video. But do stay safe, wear your safety glasses, and we'll see you tomorrow, and hopefully we get some iron.